reception to my first video on the Pro was pretty good, so let's take a look at the other media that it spun off from it. The first being the Pro meets the Ice Lady, which I gave a short summary of in the first video, but I'll go a bit more in depth here. And I promise the story is more of what you loved or hated from the first. Secondly, we'll check out the short sequel from issue 6 of Image, 30th anniversary comic book from 2022. And lastly, the comments on the first video showed me that there's an adaptation of the first book, so we'll touch on that last. So anyways, let's get it started in here. Written by Garth Ennis, again, with more beautiful art by Amanda Connor. This is The, the Pro, Pro Meets, meets the, the, the Mama of Multiple Master uh. The Kali of Cut Price Quim. I have no idea what that means. The Dusky Doll with a Dozen Dick <laughs> Hands. I'ma slap yo little white titties off, bitch. <sighs> For f <laughs> sake. I mean, what is there to say? She doesn't have any boobs. They're arms. That's like a cool design choice, but everything else. So the story starts out in an alley where we can hear John's grunting and groaning and other sounds. We then see our lady servicing fellas with a bunch of on the wall until one John comes back to complain that her service is bad, too expensive, since she uses her super speed to make them finish quick. No time to sit back and relax and get in the zone. Now, I've never paid for a service like this, but I have always thought of it like, I would feel uncomfortable because I'm just thinking I'm paying you to do this. That just feels like a loser thing to me. I don't know. Couldn't be me. Uh, before replying to the guy's complaint, she punches a hole in the wall of the building behind her, grabs a cigarette and is ready, but the lad picks up his pants and leaves. And just as business is about to start up again, we meet the Ho, who comes down to the alley using her multiple arms like fucking helicopter blades, blasting everyone in the alley around. You gone and pissed off the Ho. So she calls herself that. Uh, the Pro is just as speechless as we are. They then speak, and we learn that since the Ho has several arms, she can take her time with each paying patron, slow and smooth as she puts it, which is the way they like it. That is the way us motherfuckers like it. Oh, cool shirt. I mean, like, cool shirt. Too, I, I think. The pro gets it and proceeds to leave, but not before calling the hoe a cunt, uh. which starts up a fight. It doesn't last long because she punches a hoe across town. And instead of the story ending here, the pro goes to save her since with her super hearing, she can hear the hoe drowning in the river where she landed. Uh, they get to talking and now she's speaking without the accent. They then spend time together and talk about how she got her powers. Some ray from space hit her while she was walking home one night, which has stopped her dream of becoming a vet. The pro then gets an idea. Cut! to the Bronx Zoo. The pro is walking with someone who works at the zoo and they go into the animal husbandry area in which we see the hoe, solving the issue of animal endangerment by using her skills. The end. Um, well, so unlike the main story, I fucking hated this. My favorite part was finding out the hoe had actual dreams and aspirations and that she was upset not being able to fulfill them due to getting her powers or mutations, but that's literally a single panel. This short story is more the same with more depravity in my opinion. Fun. Mindless fun, but fun nonetheless. I still didn't like it, but I loved the helicopter arms. So that's like insane. I love that. So let's get into the sequel. 20 years later, written by Jimmy Palmiotti, one of the original three who created the pro and inked the book with incredible art again by Amanda Connor. This is The Pro, Pro back, back in business. business. The story starts. Wait, hold up. Before we start, we need to rewind. So, in my original video, I didn't include these panels. So, before the Pro blasts off into space to blast herself into nothing, she says this to the saint. I have a kid. Turn him into one of you assholes and I swear to fuck, I'll come back and haunt you forever. Then she flies off and if you watch my first video, you know what happens. So anyways, back to starting it. We open up on the International Space Station. One of the Russian astronauts is beating off to a stick figure drawing with knockers, and then BAM! Their chest on the glass. All the astronauts come out and see her. Not blown up. Houston, we have a problem. Cut to the League of Honor HQ. The Saint is FaceTiming a president we can't see as the Wonder Woman copy picks up a Green Lantern-esque dog poop in a bag. The president tells the news we already know by now. They found the pro. She's alive, and right now they're working on reviving her. Wonder Woman then talks to the Saint because he seems uneasy. He says that she's going to kill him! She asks who and why, and he explains. The lady then breaks out laughing. She then says that that she remembers the pro's final words clear as day. I have a kid. Turn him into one of you assholes and I swear to fuck I'll come back and haunt you forever. Forever.
What am I going to do? As always, you will do the right thing. But before you go retrieve our sister in arms, I would let our youngest teammate know. It's a freaking kid! To be continued. In 20 years again. Maybe. We got this last year, and frankly, I enjoyed it a lot. It wasn't completely disgusting, and the only foul bit was a guy jerking off alone. If this was Garth Ennis behind the wheel, he probably would have included a panel where Splooge floats into somebody's <laughs> mouth or something. I don't know. But back to the kid. He's an adult now, and it appears that he is the new squire, sidekick of the knight. I'm super intrigued at where this is gonna go and how they're going to explain him as a sidekick. Like, what? Is the knight just like Batman, but a little more gay? Did his previous squire or Robin get kapooed by a clown as well? I want to know where this goes next, and I hope we won't have to wait much longer to find out. I reached out on Twitter, but alas, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor joined the list of creatives I have tried to get in touch with that didn't even notice me. But fuck uh, my sob story. Let's get into adaptations of the pro. How many are there? Uh, one. There's an animated short on YouTube that was uploaded to this channel, Playwoo, on February 3rd, 2016. But according to this website, Jimmy Palmiotti said at a panel in 2010 that they were in some stage of production of a cartoon adaptation, but it fell through and after a while, he eventually uploaded the demo reel to his YouTube channel. That video on the YouTube channel is now nowhere to be found, probably deleted due to the vulgar nature of the content. The reel was animated by Titmouse, an animation studio that, to my surprise, has made some stuff I've seen before. The Boys Diabolical. Also, The Boys is good, but I'm tired of how nihilistic it is. It's another Garth and his creation. The Venture Bros, Metalocalypse, and the Trivia Crack app? You might recognize one of these though, if you didn't recognize one of those. Big Mouth, Deathstroke, Knights and Dragons, Neo Yokio, Pink Christmas, or Agent Elvis. Side note. While browsing the website, I also saw they animated a Black Panther cartoon I've never heard of. It's uploaded in its entirety onto the Marvel YouTube channel, and I watched the first half of the first episode, and it's fucking awesome. It's straight gas. A young Captain America during World War II goes into Wakanda to collect vibranium, but to his surprise, the Nazis have been beheaded. Before his arrival, and Black Panther shows up, and gives him a speech before kicking his fucking ass. Oh, and he beat the Fantastic Four too. If it makes you feel any better, the Panther also beat the Fantastic Four. The animation is sick and feels nostalgic to me, having watched Adventure Bros growing up. Shit. I need to watch this. But this video is about the pro, and this tangent has gone on long enough. Pardon the quality, this is the only copy I could find, which is on YouTube as well. So the pro demo reel opens up with flashes of images of the heroes we know, and cards that introduce the ideas of this world, because it's a demo reel. Duh. Can't do the whole series, need to do it quick. But one card gives us more backgrounds to the pro that we didn't get before from the book. So she got pregnant from her guidance counselor when she was 17, got kicked out by her parents, and, and that's what led her to the life of being a prostitute. To. This is her backstory. Jesus Christ. If this did make it to become a full series, I wonder if they would have showed us her entire backstory at some point instead of just telling it to us. Anyways, the story is the same as the book, but the main difference is that the viewer is entirely missing, and it cuts from scenes that are far apart in the book. We go from the opening car alley scene with the guy shooting at her to the morning of her discovering her powers and meeting the League of Honor, which is oddly missing the Lime and Speedo for some reason, to their first battle with the parts of English speech, and I just noticed that the knight is holding on the squire on the back of the motorcycle. Bro is a power bomb. Anyways, uh, she gets shot the same way. Then she grabs the noun and makes it rain the same as in the book. We get this card next. No good deed goes unpunished. Then immediately are greeted with the scene of her servicing the saint. We even see his d*** in a rubber just like in the book. But more graphic because she's going up and down on it with her hands. Uh, you know what happens next? He pops off. It hits a plane wing. He saves the plane. And we last see her standing in the window. Title card. That's the entire reel. Beautiful animated and voice acted, but sadly I can't find out who voiced her. Alas, another easily solved mystery, not solved. Great job, gang. But before wrapping this video up, I want to include two reactions to the pro from the page after the cover. This is from Garth Ennis directly. Comic book legend Frank Miller was particularly complimentary. <laughs> He told us. Har 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 har. Comic book golden god Jim Steranko went one better, publicly referring to us as terrorists a few days after the World Trade Center tragedy. <laughs> god damn, man. Anyways, can't wait for the follow up. Leave a comment. I read them all, despite how awful some of them are, with the shittiest takes I've ever heard in my life. Happy New Year's. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Fuck anybody that's talking down on me. Wanna talk tough on me? Better try me. A whole lot of people be counting on me. And it's all on me. I can't take that shit. Lightly. Oh, I appeal when you count me out from the jump. Motherfucker, I don't need your love. And I